I started one of my classes in enology and viticulture about three, four weeks ago. The students had a winter school. And I started my class with the following words. To the naked eye, ingredients are building blocks of food and drink. But what makes an ingredient? Molecules. Think of molecules as individual components that exist in a wide variety of plants, animals, and substances, like letters used to build words. Just as words can be turned into stories, our team at Winery identifies molecules responsible for tastes, smells, and colors, and combines them to create wine. No grapes necessary. This allows us to create a more sustainable wine, requiring a fraction of the water and none of the pesticides, a more precise wine, controlling every aspect of its flavor, a more consistent wine, shielded from poor vintages, a more accessible, delicious wine that you'll drink over and over again without breaking the bank. We're a team of scientists, sommeliers, engineers, and operators with the shared love of wine, working furiously towards launch, and they've already launched. Wines without vines are their slogan, and they've got these bottles without labels. So this is a winery in California that's a, a startup, started actually producing th synthetic wine. My students were horrified because they thought that this will be uh, taking over their jobs. Um, the good news was that <laughs> the tastings of these wines didn't go too well. One of the um, platter guide, not the platter guide, the, the American uh, taster said it was like acid soup. But uh, this might not be the case uh, a few years from now. So we were part of this team, and I think um, I'm not only representing the wine industry, I'm also venturing into, into other agricultural sectors. So what we looked at is megatrends affecting agriculture. And there are many of them. I mean, you would recognize some of them being generic. It's not only uh, agricultural specific the growing population, the globalized trade systems, biotechnology, value chains, etc., and the urbanization trends, of course, affects agriculture. And this was from the Sustainable Development Goals report. So part of our study was to create, and we've created, I think, four, three or four um, literature studies on the context of the 4IR worldwide and also in South Africa. Our approach was to look from a global agricultural perspective and then to boil it down a little bit into detail. So we first look what is coming in terms of these megatrends globally. Um, we looked at the change accelerators in the global industries of agriculture. Uh, what is the prioritized emerging technologies that's happening all over the world in agriculture and countries that lead. And then we actually focused a bit on the Western Cape domain. That was our purpose of the study is to, to make it real for the Department of Agriculture because they wanted to see how they're going to face um, this challenge. What we looked at is level of, levels of adoption, the emerging technologies, I'll get to that now, and the support systems that they need for adoption of these technologies. And then interestingly, we, we had to look at these uh, factors and this is where technology gets a context. And I'll get back to this because this is something I had to work on quite a bit in terms of taking these technologies and, and visualizing how the context affected. The government immediately told us, do not tell us just what we should do, because they know that they're inside a network of business, a network of, of a, a social uh, um, awareness, and they, there's, there are different government departments, so we cannot just tell them what they should do. We should also say what, what context um, they are in, and how they can uh, utilize it. What should be done, interventions, and where should it be done? The important thing here was to really look at the detail. Um, so we actually made 28 literature reviews of 28 different technologies, and they're all in the outer ring here. All the green parts here is agri-related, but it's important to also look at the industrial technologies that could um, spin over or then affect agriculture. The inner ring here, is just categorization, so informatics, automation, etc. And then we look at the categorization here of smart or precision agriculture um, and the sustainable agriculture, which is a very important part, which we also tried to focus on. And it was very contextual because of the water crisis that agriculture also faced in the time that we did the study. And this may be the smallest, but it might be the most important 
is the context and the ecosystem in which each technology functions. This is just a snapshot of the technology. So what we've done is we looked at, this is just a, a few of these 26 or 28 technologies. Smart farming, for instance, we put a context to that. We looked at its current uses, future uses, and synergistic technology. So we made a literature review. This is the snapshot. We had 25 to 30 pages per technology, looking specifically at the context for South Africa. This is just to show we, we're talking about a contextual framework. And this is very important. This is a study that Wolfert has done um, on just uh, the, the, the context of um, uh, uh, big data. Who's the business players? You've got your data startups, your venture capitalists, your, your farm, farms are there and farming is, is only one element. Then you've got your ag tech companies. It's important that all these players play together. And the, one of the things we've actually looked at is proprietary data. And the way that proprietary data has been protected by the big agricultural uh, um, players, especially in America now, there are court cases against big agribusiness uh, companies, tractor companies, that want to keep all the data from the, from the, for themselves. And one of, some of the more affluent farmers are, are actually uh, taking them to court and saying, this is our data. We're now moving to a system of smart farming. Precision agriculture, I say slash smart farming because this is the modern term of it, is not only positioning technology. That was what it was, and, and maybe automation came into it a little bit. Now it's artificial intelligence. It be begins to be integrated in your farming management system. And that's the challenge. Well, it's one thing putting a tractor with positioning technology on the farm. It's another thing integrating it with your financial management and other systems on the farm. So we've looked at the global trends and we came up with contextually for Western Cape, of course, climate change and water was on top of the list. How do we actually approach the challenge of climate and water uh, um, uh, challenges uh, with technology? And then we had big data, AI and machine learning on the list there automation, precision farming, interestingly, the consumer very strongly uh, focusing. How does the consumer change the nature of what we're doing? The connection with the farm, the connection with each bottle of wine um, from the source. How is that going to affect the way we actually uh, put in uh, certification systems and, and controlling systems, etc., And our marketing strategies. Genetics, as we know, it's, uh, we would say it's old, old technologies. But there are new uh, um, movements on seed technology, on fertilizer technology that actually tunes to the genetics of the plant. Impact technologies, we said uh, seven impact technologies, water management and related technologies. Of course, it was very topical in the time of the study. But then automation, IoT, low-cost sensors. We also uh, looked at the Water Institute, helped us to look at smart water technologies. We said to government that you could either be stagnant. You could actually reach a value of desolation here by just staying with the trend, doing what you're doing. You could also have ways to, to reach an agri-renaissance. And we, in the report, you will also see that we've recommended on technological level, energy environment, economics, politics, and social and health. We recommended steps for them to actually get to that renaissance position. And just to summarize, we said that uh, there's disruption drivers, there's mega trends. We need to focus on these and look at what specific ones for specific industries we can actually change. Consumer preferences, how do we adapt to that? How do we make also agriculture a, a um, lucrative business uh, opportunity for, for different industries? How many winemakers these days are not employed by a winery? Probably 30 to 40 percent of them. So my winemaking students are all going out. They don't have a clue how to run a business. And they're going to make their wine on contract inside a cellar where they hire space, going to do their own bottling and labeling and marketing. They have no clue how to do it. Yes, they have the theoretical background of how to make a wine. But that's not going to help them. So how does a university curriculum adapt to that? There's none, none of this four IR things in any agri curriculum. And now I'm probably exposing my own university. There's none of this. Well, maybe some of the courses have some elements, but we're not saying to the students, this is how we prepare you for the world of work. And this we need to change. And this is one thing my position hopefully can start changing, creating this culture of innovating, of changing, of adapting. And I think we can do it. I'm, I'm, I have a bit more positive view because I'm seeing the changes in small elements of, of where I'm uh, moving. But to change, we need to, the knowledge and we need to know what we're going to adapt to and why. Thank you.
That's my story. Thanks.